Hi, welcome to the next in our series of Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. Um, if the slides look a little bit different today, it's because I'm traveling and on the road, and I haven't prepared this in PowerPoint and imported it. I'm simply doing this directly on my iPad, so you're going to see a lot more hand drawings in this. Hopefully the ideas will still come through. Uh, we're in a new section today. We're understanding now about changing electric and magnetic fields and how that allows energy and information to propagate through space. And we're essentially in our first video of this, which is covering something called displacement current, which is a third type of current um, that we need to understand in order to get clear in our heads um, essentially how we can move information through space. If you're following along in my class, uh, chapter 6.7 of the textbook covers the material we'll be talking about today. So, so in order to understand this idea of displacement current, let's do a thought experiment. The thought experiment we're going to do is looking at current that flows through a capacitor. And in order to do it, we're going to use this basic circuit down here. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we hook up this battery at some time t equals zero, and we look at what happens. Equivalently, if I had drawn it, you could think about a switch, and we close the switch at time t equals zero, which allows current to flow. So before we hook up the battery, we know there's no charge across the capacitor. When we do hook up the battery, essentially what we see is going to happen is that the current's going to flow in this direction. Um, and essentially it's going to put positive charge in the plate of this capacitor. So let's write some positive charge here. And as time goes by, um, the battery is going to push more and more positive charge on the plate of the capacitor. And if the battery has some voltage, let's call it V, we know essentially that the amount of charge that's eventually going to go on to that capacitor is Q equal the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage. We know this is the case because we discovered this and talked about it in our lesson on capacitance, which was um, done somewhat previously. Well, what happens on the negative plate of the capacitor? Um, essentially, you've got the negative side of the battery, so let's put a negative sign there, um, having a flow of electrons, which is going to go that way, and negative charges are going to flow because the positive charges are going to exert a force that pulls the negative charges, and essentially, as we know, we're going to get negative charges over on this plate of the capacitor, which are going to balance out the positive charges. If we look at what's happening in these current meters over here, essentially, you're going to get the needle swinging, as I've drawn here, in that direction, because the negative charge goes that way. For the positive current meter on the positive side, the needle's going to go that way because we have a positive current flowing. And essentially the way we think about this in electrical engineering is that essentially what's happened is that we've, we've closed a circuit. And at least for some period of time until that capacitor charges, current's going to flow from this terminal through the capacitor around and back into the battery. And once the capacitor gets charged, then the current's going to stop flowing and we're going to get a static condition. Of course, the charge on the capacitor is going to set up an electric field that's going to go in this way. And that electric field is going to be zero when we first hook up the battery and is going to slowly increase in time as it gets charged. And once we charge the capacitor, the electric field will be static. And this is essentially because we've created a loop, and uh, Kirchhoff's law tells us we're going to get a current flowing around the loop. Now, now, this all makes sense to a point, and all the electrical engineers should be nodding their heads because we all understand this. But it brings up kind of a strange situation as well. And that strange situation is that there is nothing inside the plate of this capacitor. Um, this is an insulator. How does current flow through an insulator? Because this wouldn't be a capacitor if you didn't have two plates separated by an insulator. And that's the question we want to answer. And it turns out that there's a type of current called displacement current that acts like a current where no charge really flows. So how do we understand this? Basically, we understand it by writing a few algebraic expressions, uh, very simple expressions for things we already know. We know that the voltage is essentially the line integral of the electric field. And because the electric field, if you ignore fringing effects in a parallel plate capacitor, is essentially a constant, uh, we don't even need to do that in integral. Essentially, all we need to do is write the magnitude of the electric field times the spacing d between the capacitor plates. And that's essentially the voltage. So we relate the voltage to ele the electric field. Uh, we also know that the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, at least in an ideal case, is epsilon which is the permittivity of the material between the capacitance plates multiplied by the area of the plates divided by the spacing D between the plates. We know our current in this circuit is I is equal to C dV dt, where I is the current, C is the capacitance, and dV dt is the rate of time. 
of change of the voltage, and we know we can write current as J, the current density, uh, multiplied by the area the current flows in. And so I is just equal to JA. So these are some really simple expressions. They've all been explained before. There's nothing really tricky here. So let's go ahead and take this expression that I've underlined here and rewrite it to say the current, J times A, is equal to the capacitance, epsilon A over D, times the voltage. Well, we can see that when we take our simple expression, I equals C dV dt, and rewrite it in this form, um, that a couple things cancel. This D is going to cancel with that D. Uh, we also know that this A over here is going to cancel with that A, so we can remove those from the expressions. And what we end up with is this expression down here, that the current density is equal to the permittivity times the rate of change of the electric field, or in other words, the current density is the rate of change of the electric flux vector with time. So we've related current to the change of a field. Now this may seem like a lot of mathematical mumbo-jumbo, and in some ways it is, but it really is an observable physical phenomena. Um, and let, let's see if we can get an understanding on what this means a little bit. But we're going to stretch your, your boundaries of what a current is and ask you to sort of reconceptualize current in somewhat of a different way by the end of the day. One way we can understand this is we say, okay, um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill this capacitor with some kind of dielectric. So there's some kind of material between the plates of this capacitor. We know if we want to make a big capacitance, we choose a material with a high epsilon, a high primitivity. Let's go ahead and, and change my color here because that epsilon is almost impossible to see most likely. So we have some material there that has a high epsilon. And we know this material, as we learned when we talked about materials in electric fields, is made up of, of atoms or molecules. And these atoms or molecules just sit there. In the case that we essentially will put some positive charges on one side of the plate of the capacitor, and the capacitor is charged in this case, and in the case that we will essentially put some negative charge on the other side of the capacitor, so let's write some negative charge over here, um, essentially what we create is we create an electric field, and this electric field is going to essentially put a force on these molecules and atoms. And essentially what you're going to see is you're going to see that the electron clouds that are negatively charged move toward the positive plate. And the way to think about a displacement current on one hand, if you want to have sort of physical intuitive explanation, is that the, the shifting of these electron clouds across the space really acts like a current. There really is charge that moves in this negative charge that moves in that direction um, because of the distortion of these atoms and molecules as this field builds up, as charge builds up over time. And essentially we can understand this current as the rate of change of the electric flux vector over time because remember D includes the permittivity. Now unfortunately this intuitive picture breaks down in the case that we have nothing between the plates of our capacitors. And we know that, that we can create a capacitor that has two metal plates in vacuum. It's going to act like a capacitor. We don't need to put some kind of material between it. And in reality, essentially, you're still going to have current that flows in a loop um, around this circuit for a time when you hook up the battery as the capacitor begins to charge. Um, so it turns out that there is another type of current that, that we can write a current density simply equal to the rate of change of the electric flux vector. So remember, we have some electric flux vector that's going to build up across. And if the electric flux vector within this capacitor changes, it acts exactly like a current is flowing, whether real physical charges are moving or not. And that's, that's an important thing to state, so let me state it again. The reality of the situation is in order to understand circuits at a macroscopic level, we have to define a current density, J, that's related to the rate of change of the electric flux vector, D, that essentially acts just like a current is flowing even if there's no physical motion of charges whatsoever. And this is what we call a displacement current. So to conclude, it's worthwhile saying there are three different types of currents we recognize as electrical engineers. Um, the first of these is essentially called a drift current. And drift current is in situations where you have free charges that can move. And in this case, the current density is equal to the density of charges per unit volume multiplied by the charge on each charge times the velocity of the charge. And we use this expression for drift current 
in situations where we have free particles moving like electron beams, particle accelerators, uh, vacuum tubes, for example, although we don't use those very often anymore except in microwave applications. And we also talk about drift current when we talk about semiconductors because in semiconductors you can have both positive and negative charges that are free to move. The second type of current is conduction current, and this is the one that we think of most commonly when we think of current in electrical engineering. And this is when carriers move through materials such as wires. We know these materials are determined by a conductivity, sigma. We learned about that conductivity and how the, the value of the conductivity arises from the material and the collisions that go on. And in this case, the current is given by the conductivity times the value of the electric field. So we have to put an electric field across materials in order for conduction current to occur. This is commonly done by essentially putting a potential different across it, which creates an electric field inside the material. And essentially, the current that flows is then going to be determined by the conductivity of the material itself. Now, the third type of current we're talking about, and what we learned today, is a type called displacement current. And this one's much more difficult to visualize. Um, for both drift current, we can think about charges actually moving with some velocity. For conduction current, we can think about something that flows like a current that flows with a resistor. Our conduction current is V equals IR, as we saw, if we can rewrite this for certain types of structures. But in a displacement current, you essentially have a current that flows not because charges actually move, but because the electric flux vector changes with time. And so a changing electric flux behaves like a current, um, even though no charges may physically be moving. It's a hard concept to get across, but it's a really critically important one to understand electromagnetics. And nobody said this stuff was going to be easy.